it has a love-hate relationship, that race, because it's just so hard and so many things can happen. But when, when everything goes your way, it's the best thing ever. The further I've got in my career, the, the more I've uh, enjoyed doing it, the better I've got at doing it. And, uh, yeah, it's just the more that relationship has blossomed. You know, you, people back home who, who just watched the race, they go, how was Roubaix last year? And I said, oh, yeah, finished. And they go, oh, wow, you know, how was... They sort of don't really understand, I guess, until they... You, you really... I didn't really understand either. You know, I looked, oh, honey, a hundred guys finished. Why is this possible? And you get out there and you think, yeah, this is why. <laughs> it was one of those races that I always saw pictures of in... Um magazines with the mud on the face, the cobblestones and the big riders, which I, I guess I consider myself a bigger type rider in terms of size. Few, few sort of emotions going on, obviously a little bit nervous, but uh, at the same time very excited. You know, this is one of the races that, you know, look on as, as a kid and, and you just, uh, you know, think how cool would it be to do that race. It's like a, you know, a war on wheels. Yeah, I think we've just got to keep plugging away um, and as a group and I think we're stronger as we fight as a team um, if you're going through that misery by yourself and, and there's nobody else there with you feeling your pain so if we stick together and and um, we can use each other more um, and this race Sundays there is going to be bad luck somewhere along the way um, and it's how you deal with that is more importantly staying calm and, and thinking clearly about what's going on and, and that's hard you know, the first thing you want to do is throw your bike into the field, but um, that's probably the last thing you should do. So really just as soon as something happens, thinking where are my teammates, where's the team car, what sector am I on, where are wheels, and trying to take things slowly and, and calmly, and you've got plenty of time after the race to throw things. If they're not there, it's because they're buggered, and if they are there, you know they're doing it for you. So that's the feeling I have going into tomorrow. And with Matt, you know, he... I know he's always going to tell you something that's useful and never keep it to himself, which is, which is really nice to know from an experienced guy. That's what you would always expect from someone who knows what to do. You want to know, you want to pick their brain, and he always shares that. So, Always keep riding, whatever happens. Punches, falls, so everything. It's worth getting to the velodrome. Um, it's the end of, you know, a lot of hard work, the, the weeks and whatever happens. I think that's something... I think um, once you get them under your belt, and, and that's a good starting point. So just keep going. Um, get a wheel and keep going. So the idea is uh, for Matthew that uh, uh, Sam, you will stay around Matthew from the beginning. Mm -hmm. If something happens, you always, you're always there. They don't, that don't mean you have to sit in the wind all day with him, but around him. If you stop for a piss, you're there. Always with your leader. You have you have to communicate yeah. what you want. Yeah, right? for sure. If you if you're if you're feeling totally up and you go, look, look yeah. guys, just stay around me, then yeah. just don't yeah. do that. You yeah. want guys to put your position on. I think definitely after the forest. Mm. Yeah, 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 nothing and before. and what was talking a lot often, those groups go on the roads and not on the cobbles. Yeah. yeah. And Matty just communicate, just talk yeah, to yeah, me. Yeah, no, or no. Or I will talk to you straight away. Yeah. He gets bored easily. Yeah. So. No, not about yeah, the race, just about other shit. You take the green road as many no. times as possible, boys. It's the quickest. But so I think shorter. if everybody well, talks to everybody, just in general, even if it's just idle chit chat, yeah. no, like you're saying, but just asking yeah. how you yeah. are, if you've got enough food, what's going on. Yeah. And it can be like, oh, I've just had a punch and I just got back. So at least everyone knows, oh, yeah. well, we actually, he's just had a chase or something. Mm. Yeah. You know, just so everybody knows what's going on with everybody else in their own. Yeah. Because you get so focused in these things, there's so much going on that you're in your own bubble, you're in, yeah. and you don't. Especially if it's going to be dusty as hell. Yeah. 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 See shit. From that first period, we got a lot of bad luck. We got the great result in the panne. We showed in a tree. We are there as a team if we want to. So let's tomorrow t uh, turn that bad luck in good luck. And as a team, we're going to make it then. Just believe in it. Sounds good. Let's do it. Perry Roubaix is probably one of the more stressful races for the mechanics uh, because of the wider range of work we have to do. All the different equipment we use, we use uh, from the wheels, bigger tubulars, uh, stronger wheels but softer uh, to absorb the shock. 
and then the bigger tubulars um, to get a softer ride across the cobblestones and also to try and have less punches. And then the frames are all not so stiff like the uh, foils that we use. We use the Attics, which is a little bit less carbon layout, a little bit softer ride uh, with a round seat post, so it flexes a little bit to give the rider a little bit more comfort. Don't be jumping with everything again. Let's, let's try and put someone in the brake, but be selective, have one or two cracks each, and that's it. And, and take the gamble that it's gonna go from that point, 40K in. Yeah, for that, just be up there, just be following around. And it's easier to be in that ball at the front yeah. than mm -hmm. sitting down the back through yeah. this, like, they're not big towns or anything, but yeah. just yeah. be attentive, isn't it? It's only six hours or six and a half hours, and, 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 game and, on. And be with him with that, especially that 40 kilometer mark there, because it's going to split in the crosswinds. Yeah. One more thing as well, that the sector before the Arenberg for you guys like you, Heppy, Adis, putting the guys in position for the Arenberg, it's actually, that sector before is the point where they have to be in the front. Because it goes straight into a headwind and then you turn into a crosswind halfway yeah. along the sector and then you come off that sector and it's into a tailwind to the Arenberg. So the position that they are in in that sector before is where you're going to be for the Arenberg. That sector 90, we will tell you over So that's, that's, that's crucial to put the guys in to position at that point. Good luck. Good luck. Yes. Yeah, Carlton, the, the forest of Arenberg uh, doesn't need too much of an explanation. Obviously, this, this lead group now hitting it, but it, it is absolutely legendary. But they hit it at around 50 to 60 kilometers an hour, and it doesn't... Yeah, I would say that's more scary than... Uh, I think any goosebumps might be on the other side, but uh, going in is, uh, is pretty scary. Uh, you know, I've seen guys lying there with broken legs and things like that. Um, you know, I've ridden in it in the rain, going in there in the rain, so yeah, it's scary, but it's something you, if you want to be there and you want to be doing it, then, you know, um, I like to leave it late and just move up at the last minute and get, it's the safest spot, as scary as it is, the safest spots at the front, so that's a pretty good uh, incentive to move up, because um, the crashes are normally at the back, so um, I'll be scared as hell and try and be at the front. Everyone earmarks it, every team earmarks it as the place to be in the front because that's where the, the race goes away. Well, the first crucial split of the race is always at, at the Arenberg. So when you've got 200 bike riders, you know, 20 team managers telling everyone in the radio, be at the front for Arenberg, creates a lot of stress when you've only got two lane wide road coming into Arenberg, plus a really quite a dangerous section previous. So. Yeah, it makes it for a really, really tricky and a really, really dangerous run in. Yeah, 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 we're in there, we're in there. Two guys from us. Alright, we're right there. It's actually faster if you just take it easy, like you still jump out of the car quickly and you, you rush up as quick as you can to the bike, but if you try and do it really fast, trying to save time, uh, you end up fumbling it and you, you get worse, so if you just you get to the bike as quick as you can and then just concentrate on taking the wheel out for example and just removing it in your own time, you end up actually doing it quite a bit faster. You also know uh, that if you start to run low on wheels, um, you've always got guys almost at every section who are standing on the side of the road uh, at the end of the sectors with spare wheels in case they can service the rider faster. So you can always switch out wheels with them, take on to keep your stocks up high. That's uh, David Boucher as well. Uh, he got himself a puncture, don't forget, as part of the break. Oh, we've got a crash and we've got a man down here and it's uh, from a Europe car in the road right now. Oh, goodness me, guys, and a Belkin rider as well. Uh, due to a collision with a cyclist 
Oh, and uh, they're hitting the deck, and this is a big one. We've been waiting for it. Giant Shimano, again, are the team who have... Oh, look at that! One man down, right off the front. We were talking about the side of the road, and that took Karen Jalara down. It was uh, Hayden Rolston who actually uh, tried to jump onto the, the footpath exactly as you were, at the same time as you were talking about it, taking down his team leader, Fabian Cancellara, who looks unhurt at the moment. The race, the biggest thing for me is the positioning, so it's just a day of positioning for every single sector. Um, so that's that's how the race, if you can go into every sector uh, in the first 10 or 15, then, then, uh, and then when it gets more important, even in the first five, then, then that's, that's where the race is won. With Tom Bonin, but I think the cool customer at the moment is Fabian Cancellara sat in uh, third place at the moment, out of the saddle, stretching those legs. Well, it is a uh, fabulous event, this. It's uh, the 112th running of it. All right, Mitch, if you can get up the front and help Trek, mate. That's about five kilometres to the next section. You can get up and help Trek, mate. It'd be great. When we were three guys there, I think there must have been about 30 guys left. 30k to go, and I was Matt asked me to pull that brake back, and I was feeling super strong. And the brake was coming back, whether they sat up, I don't know, but the brake was coming back, 15 seconds, you know, 10 seconds. I was like, shit, I'm pulling this brake back on my own. And um, then I knew that Matt and Jens, who I'd seen ride all day, I, I knew they were really, really good. It wasn't like I was just pulling the brake back and maybe we had a chance. I thought, more than happy to do it because I knew those guys were gonna give 100% to try and win the race. Not just to get a result, but to try and win. Great work, Mitch. Great work, mate. Kit, Fabian Cancellara. Of course, he has a Corinthian gladiator helmet adorning oh, the head tube. The ditch has a crash it. on the corner. It has, and that's Van Avermaet who's in the ditch. Some amazing things, and we've got an attack, and it's rolling into them. Oh, and going for it is Nicky Terpstra. He's decided that uh, this fun is is not over. This is an absolutely su superb move by Nicky Terpstra. Obviously, absolutely flying at the moment. Uh, Terpstra's wrapped this one up. Terpstra, oh, it, uh, let's just hope he doesn't have him. Look at the study of concentration. His legs are going to be burning, but he knows it's possible. He knows it's 14 seconds. And I don't know why. It's just because it's uh, it's it's almost doesn't matter where you are in the race, whether you're 25 minutes behind or you're in the front or one time the lights are on, light rain, and it's just surreal. It just is because no other race you come in and finish on a velodrome like that and. For every rider, the crowd's pretty enthusiastic, so a bit of a roar goes up and you're caked in mud and you've, you've finished it. And it's also the end of a hard classics campaign, so something that started in November the year before. So it's always full of emotion, just that, that lap is always emotional. You know, it's almost kind of a big relief when you ride into the velodrome, sort of the whole stress of the whole month of, of racing and, and uh, the whole day is, you know, it's kind of uh, overwhelming. It's a nice way to finish to ride into the velodrome with all the crowd and um, and realise, you know, for, you know, 100 years of, of cycling history that you're uh, a little piece of part of it, you know, and uh, special to finish my second Roubaix. Oh, look, the guys were great today and it was great to be a leader in this race. I've ridden it, you know, so many times and to have that feeling, yep, I could, you know, rely on the guys being there for me and they were all through the race. I punctured once early on, got changed, got back on and um, was given it everything towards the end and at 10k to go had a puncture. Now, it probably wasn't up for the win, might not have even been up for a podium, but uh, just, yeah, really gutted that I couldn't just, you know, that last 10k just finish where I deserved to finish, um, but nothing can be taken away from the way we rode. We had three guys there at the end, um, everyone committed. But yeah, for me, I'm running out of chances in this race and, you know, um, who knows if we couldn't have come back to that second group and been sprinting on the velodrome for, for a podium, but um, that's bike racing, I guess.